All right, what is up everybody? This is Trent with SoutheastFitReport.com at Ground Zero in Spartanburg, South Carolina. This Today we're with Hawthorne Heights. How are you guys doing? Uh, pretty well, I think. <laughs> pretty well? Yeah, right. I feel pretty good. Doing good. Okay. Yeah. All right, sweet. So introduce yourselves to our viewers and what y'all do, in case nobody knows. Uh, I'm JT. I sing and play guitar. I'm Matt. I uh, play bass and drive a lot. <laughs> I'm Mark. I play guitar and sleep a lot. Sleep a lot, sweet. All right, sweet. So uh, you guys are out here on this 10-year tour and everything. So um, how's that been going? Let's start that one off. Uh, it's been going for about a little over a year. Yeah. And uh, we're wrapping it up right now in markets that we haven't played in a long time, like Spartanburg. Last night was Greensboro, North Carolina. Uh, you know, places like that, places that aren't the typical Charlottes and Atlanta and yeah. stuff like that. So uh, we're having a lot of fun playing these cities we haven't been to in a long time. Some of them we've never been to. And uh, then we're kind of closing out the 10 year anniversary of If Only You Were Lonely. Okay, sweet. How do you like Spartanburg so far? It's cool. I think we played here in like 2007 or 2006 or something like that when it was the other building. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's a cool town. All right, awesome. What about you guys? How's it going for y'all? About the same. It's about good. The, about the same? Spartanburg's cool. We yeah. went to uh, <laughs> Starbucks this morning, and for some reason, we've already been there. I don't know when, but we passed. <laughs> It was like in the last couple of years, as soon as I pulled up, I was like, I've been to this one. Yeah. So that's cool. See a familiar spot you weren't yeah. expecting. Yeah. Okay. I got you. So uh, it seems to be like this time is last year and this year is when bands have been doing the whole 10 year anniversary tours of the records and stuff. They're, so I guess what made you guys decide to do it for, um, for yourselves? Everybody else is doing it. So we're like, <laughs> yeah, our album just happened to come out 10 years prior. <laughs> pretty much a big present. gold. No, nah, really. Uh, for the fans you know it sounds like a like a cliche answer but we kind of don't care what we play up there we okay. happy playing songs that we wrote so whatever the fans want to hear we're happy to play and it's just a lot of fun you know it's a lot of fun to see uh fans get to have that experience a lot of bands won't do it um uh, and we're excited to do it there's also there's also songs in that record that we never really got to play um that's loud. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we got these mics, so it's yeah, so, yeah. so, so okay. <laughs> but, uh, but there's songs we like never really got to play, so to actually, 10 years later, have to learn old songs, but have to actually learn how to play them. It makes oh, our yeah. lives interesting again, too, instead of just playing the same thing over and over, so it's yeah, kind of cool that way. Okay. Does it feel weird having to, I guess, learn your own music? It does. Yeah, it's, it's, definitely, it's definitely weird. I think... A lot of people probably don't think about it, but you know, like we've written, I don't know, 150 songs as a band or something like that. We only know probably 10 or 15 of those at a time. Yeah. You know, like it, it's easy to re-pick them up, but like when somebody will yell out a song that we wrote in like 2008 yeah. and that we haven't touched since 2008, we cannot play it <laughs> right then, right there on the spot. So that's one reason that the 10 year anniversary tour is good because you know the exact set list. You know that if that's your favorite album, we're gonna play every song off of it. Okay. And there's people, there's people that have been coming to see our shows for over a decade, and we're playing songs they've never heard us play before. Okay. So that's nice. pretty. That's a pretty cool, pretty cool feeling to do that for us and them. Okay. Yeah. 2006 and the mid 2000s in general don't feel like it was that long ago, but a lot of change. A lot of things have changed in the music industry since then. You know, you guys. I believe this record hit number three on the charts for you guys and everything so i guess from then till now what has what have you seen change in the music industry to where back then that was you know something that i guess more or less could not happen now if that makes any sense with the whole streaming and downloads and all that yeah it's just it's a a strange time in music because everything's really fluid right now so you don't really know <laughs> how people access music you know that people still listen to music and it's still a very important part of their lives but no one can really pinpoint how people access it. Some people still buy CDs every week. Some people exclusively buy vinyl. Some people don't buy anything. Some yeah. people just some people watch YouTube and while listening to music. Yeah. Uh, so it's strange. So you got to kind of make your music available in a lot more places, which is good in ways. But it's really hard for people to track the size of a band or anything like that. I think the weirdest thing is the albums come out on Friday now. Oh yeah, I still can't. <laughs> I still can't get with that, man. I I was buying CDs and records for so many years on Tuesdays that yeah, it same. still blows my <laughs> mind. That I think that's the weirdest change. I don't understand it, but I I, I will almost guarantee people listen to music now more than ever. 
but just but they're not just going to Best Buy buying one CD and going home. Yeah. I bet they're just listening to song after song after song. Probably people listening to 40 different bands in 20 minutes, which is yeah. cool in its own way. So that's cool. I think so much of it has changed in how we approach the business aspect of it and putting out a record. But as far as the shows, that's been the one consistent thing. Oh, yeah. And uh, we're still very much just a live band. So that's been, and our fans have stuck with us all these years. So that's been the, uh, that's been the one consistent thing in the industry for us. Okay. So how do you guys think it would have been different if you guys would have been getting started now in 2016 with your music and stuff? How do you think, I guess, your records would be received or how much success do you think they would have? Or how do you think people would access them? Because back in the, back then it was all like MySpace, pure volume and stuff. Now you got like Spotify, Apple, literally anywhere on the internet. So if you guys are starting now, how do you think you guys would approach it? I, I don't really know. I, you know, like we didn't really have a whole lot to do with it. It just kind of took off because people really enjoyed the songs and they enjoyed the music. So I like to think that it would happen at a similar trajectory, just in a different way. Yeah. Um, you know, a, a lot of it's lightning in a bottle. A lot of it's right place, right time. And uh, but you know, we work extremely hard every single day of those releases and everything. So I like to think that we would have worked just as hard, probably just in different ways. Okay. You guys have any thoughts on it or? I don't know what we'd do. Yeah. <laughs> Put it wherever and hope that people hear it. And I mean, if it's if it's good, I think people would hear it. Oh, so yeah. that's about it. I mean, there's like, right now, there's like rappers that are unsigned and sell millions of copies. Oh of, yeah. Like, I mean, there's just, so it's just, if something's good and people connect with it at the time and place, done all yeah. you need is the internet so. uh, yeah i think that's chance it. the rapper i believe yeah, that's, that's who i'm yeah, talking about yeah, yeah. It's crazy. he's uh that's crazy. refuses to sign a record label yeah. which is pretty yeah, insane he does he yeah. does better than, yeah why would you killing yeah. it okay so. all right so um with this album you know everybody's in a certain place and time when they write these songs when you guys are writing these songs and everything how is it now playing them do you guys still i guess refeel any of those emotions 10 years later when you play them or are they just like songs that you're playing because you know they're your songs and you're playing them i mean it, it's a little bit of, of each of those scenarios because not every single song is about the writer personally okay. you know you're picking up other things whether it's something on the news or whether it's something uh from a friend or a family member or something else within the band you know you're trying to write in as many metaphors as you can so people understand what you're saying but without getting too close and also being able to relate that to their lives okay. you know if i was writing songs lyrically about how hard it is to be on tour and how much we can argue because we're annoyed about being on tour i don't think that very many people could relate to that yeah. so you got to find a way to you know channel whatever is annoying in your life into something that somebody else can relate to okay what about you guys yeah I mean, uh, when we were relearning, learning how to play these songs again, I mean, we would talk about together, like, stuff that happened in the studio, stuff like that. So in that way, you reconnect with that kind of stuff. Um, I play bass. I can only connect so hard. With it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So, but I think it's cool to, like, remember, like, time and place, like, where you were when we were writing it, where, like, how we were feeling when that hit number three like you said and stuff like that that kind of stuff and bringing it back and playing it all the yeah. way through is kind of cool was that a surprise for you guys uh, that that chart obviously a bunch of little i mean were y'all expecting dudes from ohio i don't <laughs> well i mean I can't let, imagine let me let me, re let me re ask that were you guys like surprised with how high it charted? because i'm sure you guys were hoping or expecting some kind of success from it but like that that amount of it or it's just we didn't we never approached anything like that like matt said you know we grew up in such a small area that having an album in stores was the most important thing it wasn't how many people bought it or oh, yeah. on any chart or anything like that and to be such a young band at that time you couldn't really quantify what number three on the billboard chart meant other than it said number three on the billboard chart <laughs> you know what okay. i mean like you, you knew oh that, that sounds pretty cool that's pretty big you know uh but to be a rock band and to be able to sell that much stuff even at that time was a pretty big feat so we're we're always super proud of that okay now i want to fast forward to last year you guys put out a, a ep slash album thing it's kind of in the middle in my opinion um called hurt and stuff and to me it kind of like revisits that old style you guys you know put out the first couple of albums and stuff so i guess uh what made you guys want to kick back to the old style a little bit go back to visit your roots a little bit 
I think it's just the nature of the songs. I think it's, you know, we always, when we're sitting down writing, we're not like, hey man, we should try and, you know, throw it back or we should try and write something extremely out of the box. We all kind of write together and if it comes out heavy or cool, if it comes out, uh, the melody stands out so much that it sounds like a poppier song. That's just kind of how it is. But, um, you know, th that album in general is, is supposed to be about dark times in someone's life and I think that that's kind of how older material is as well okay. so I think you'll notice stuff like that oh, yeah yeah I actually really love that album it's one of my favorites last year actually Thanks, so man. yeah yeah no problem so um, after this tour you guys are wrapping up this 10-year tour and stuff what do you guys have I guess moving forward with music or future touring plans are you guys just going to take a break for a bit we're going to do an 11 year <laughs> tour of this album all next year it's going to be great <laughs> uh, if you want to be an active musician you do not take breaks. Okay. Yeah. It's just not possible. So uh, we will be writing, okay. we'll be rehearsing, we'll be in the studio. We will be, we do an acoustic tour with Bayside for seven days a week, some might call it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, and then constantly planning for next year. So like one of the ways that we continue to be um, an established band is that we try to think as far ahead as we can and not just ask one another what do you guys want to do two weeks from now you cannot think about it like that you yeah. can either say hey we got to take six months off or keep the train rolling okay you know that's yeah. just how the nature of you know promotion and stuff like that you just got to think really far ahead of time okay. um so we'll continue doing that all right so all these years, how have you guys, I guess, managed your money well on tour so you guys could have success and not, I guess, put your band into the ground financially to where you got to stop doing this? You, you got to be realistic. You know, like there, we've, we've kind of seen it all. We've toured in a minivan before. We've toured in a bus. We've toured in a, uh, you know, like in a, a typical Ford touring van with a trailer. And we've toured in a Sprinter. So we've seen it. Uh, and a bandwagon. So we've seen it from all different parts of the financial spectrum. Uh, so what we do is we try to balance comfort with economy, um, which for us is staying in hotels instead of getting a bus and like paying for a driver and all the fuel and everything like Cleaning that. Cleaning up after yourself. Yeah. Hotel, none of that. It's great. Yeah, so what you do is you just, you gotta balance economy with reality. Okay. And uh, we have always kind of made it a point to live meager on the road, meaning we would rather take our money home. Yeah. You know, and for our for our family and for ourselves to like enjoy our home life, we're willing to like struggle. Hot piece pizza just got here, and I'm <laughs> losing it. <laughs> but, uh, Cheers for pizza. <laughs> we're willing to like struggle on the road so we don't struggle at home at all. Okay. You know. Okay. And uh, like, uh, like we will load in our stuff. We don't have any crew do that or anything. And we used to have a bunch of crew and stuff. But I mean, it we can load in in seriously five to ten minutes total. And like today, I mean, Mark, we we're like, man, who pays for a crew for that? I mean, we put our <laughs> amps down, put our guitars up, and then we leave. And it's, yeah, it's easy. It's it's easy. It's it's as it's as hard as you want to make it. Yeah. <laughs> I've, heard, I've heard some bands. Um, I believe it was another interview I heard with a guy. The, uh, Ryan Seaman, I think, from Falling in Reverse, and some other, I think uh, Will Francis also said this in another one, that uh, bands don't need all that stuff. They can be their own manager. They can be their own mm -hmm. accountants and all that. So is that you something? You can be as hands-on as you want to be. You is, really can. And, and it all depends on what you want to do and what you want to accomplish. Mm -hmm. Some people just want to play songs at night, and that's all they want to do. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they want to go and do everything else during the day and sleep or party or do whatever. Um, we're a band that's very hands-on because we like to know where everything is going. And also, it, it's just a better logistically and financially to do it like that. And, okay. you know, you can maintain longevity by doing it that way. Um, like, I, like I said, we're uh, a band from, you know, the small parts of America. So we're used yeah. to, like, hard work and stuff like that. We, even though it was, I think, 12 years ago that our first album came out, we still remember how the touring was like then, and it wasn't that hard to, to like reconfigure it to that. Okay, awesome. Well, I got a fun one for you, and we'll get out of here. 
out of all these years, what is, or even currently, what is a unique or random moment you've had with a fan, whether it be signing something or interaction they've had? What is, I guess, a memory with a fan, whether it's funny or awkward or meaningful that you guys have experienced? I remember the first time, I don't know if we ever signed a second one, but the first time I ever signed a car was oh. strange. <laughs> yeah. A car. Mm -mm. That's a interesting. Car. It was yeah. a Holly Smith yeah. in, like, New England area. We were like, I mean, we were, I was probably 21 or something, 22. And somebody was like, can you sign my car? And I remember, I'll never forget, like, being like, this is so ridiculous. <laughs> they probably so, got a pinstripe on yeah, there with your signature. I mean, it was on the inside of the car. I just thought that was oh. so crazy. But, like, that's probably stuck with me just because that was the first time that I was like, yeah. I'm 21. I'm somewhere I've never been before, and I'm signing someone's car. <laughs> so. All right, sweet. Well, uh, if he has a like, better yeah, one, you, got, you guys got to know. No, I like that one. That's car? A, good a car? Let's go with that. Okay, awesome. Well, thanks for talking to us today and uh, looking thanks forward to seeing you guys later. Cool. Yeah, Thank awesome. Thanks so much. Yeah. Thank you.